Hello. Good to see you today. Um, I'm very excited to keep going in Pokemon Yellow. I'm just having a great, grand old time. Um, again, if you're new, my name's Trent. Um, I go by Silver Cave Gaming here. And I am literally just on a little quest to share some of my favorite video games ever. Because I love video games. And I am excited to keep going today. So, um, we just got to Lavender Town, for those who haven't been with us yet. Um... It is the ghostly, purpley city here. And we can't continue on to the Pokemon Tower, like the Pokemon Graveyard, because we need to do some other stuff. So when you go down here, um, there is actually a route down here. With excellent music, like always. Um, and there are some fishermen down here you can fight, but this actually leads to where that Snorlax was that blocked our way. And we still can't quite move him, so that's not really an, uh, an option for us here. Um, but this, this part of the game is where, once you get through the first three gyms, that's where this game in particular really opens up, and you can kind of go some different ways. Um, um, some different places. So here, I'm gonna do my best to skip some of these trainers because I know there's some new Pokemon that we're gonna add to the squad. Um, and we're probably gonna get one today. Um, just thinking it'll be a kind of quick stream, maybe 45 minutes today. Um, let's see here. Uh, we'll just go hanky pinky. Yeah, gonna have to fight either this lady or that guy, so I want this lady. Um, yeah, that's one thing that people really like about this game in particular, or like Generation 1, um, is that you're kind of like on one track for the earlier parts of the game, and then when you get into the middle parts, um, you kind of really get to pick your adventure, which is lovely. And I think a really good balance between uh, linearity, I guess. Um, a good balance between a linear story and a more open one. And that's what they decided to do with Pokemon... Nice critical hit. Uh, with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is that they really wanted to make something like open world. That is something that people were really looking for in Pokemon. And there's some trainers up there, like past this tree, but I'm going to cut through this tree because I want to fight those trainers later. Just like that. Um, and yeah, they I think they really did a good job with it overall in Scarlet and Violet. And I am not really one that was clamoring for the open world thing. I really like a linear story. I've kind of explained that before. Um, because you really just experience it kind of like it's a movie, and I really enjoy movies and plays and things like that. Yeah, so this guy is thirsty and the road's closed. That's something that we're probably going to be able to figure out here soon as well. So we can't go to that city, but we can... Okay, I think I have to fight one of these guys, so I'm going to fight this guy. Because we have to get to that little house up there. <laughs> this is the gambler trainer class. I really like the gamblers because they all have like one type. Um, uh, that sucks. I don't really know. It might still be... Okay, it knows water gun now. I thought it maybe just still only knew bubble. Yeah, we're still asleep. Okay, it knows both actually. Um, yeah, and Bubble can lower our speed, which is annoying. As always, Poliwag, it was faster than us anyway and put us to sleep. I'm surprised that my Mankey wasn't faster, honestly. Yeah, I'm really trying to wake up naturally here, but it is not working. Ugh, okay. I guess I'll have to switch out. Alright, we'll go into Wife. Get that tight matchup going. Ah, yes, our what? Ugh. 
Isn't this fun? We're having a great time. Sorry for a little bit of speed up here. I'm just trying to get through the sleep. There we go. Yeah, I try not to use the speed up too terribly much because I know it can kind of speed up the music like that and it's not always excellent to listen to, but sometimes when you're just trying to get through those turns while you're asleep, I can kind of keep the action going for you guys a little bit better that way. Let's go into Birdie here. So, I was kind of really thinking about it off stream. And I really decided to plan out a team uh, to use for this playthrough that really kind of showcased some of the things that this game has to offer. Now, I know I, I'm not using the starters that the game gives you because I wanted to do something a little different. And that is something that maybe first time players would do very commonly. So I wanted to show some of the other things that this game had to offer and some of the other kind of key Pokemon that you have access to in this game. I'm gonna switch train a little bit with Hanky Panky. Yeah, this is Poliwhirl. This is what Poliwag evolves into. Fun fact, I know that this was one of the creators of Pokemon. This was their favorite Pokemon, which I thought was really cool. It might have been Ken Sugimori, I think. I may be, I might be wrong. But I think one of the creators of Pokemon, their favorite Pokemon was Poliwhirl. And Poliwhirl is actually, or Poliwag and Poliwhirl are actually based off of tadpoles because in some tadpoles they're, they, you can see into their body and you can see like the swirly organs inside. So that's why that was the inspiration behind that line of Pokemon, which is really, really interesting. And as the series has gone on, they have done so many cool things with Pokemon inspiration. Ah, Celadon. Yes, Celadon City. That's going to be our next city. I'm just dancing to the music all day long. This is so delightful. And again, I explained yesterday um, that just playing these games on a nice weekend morning, a nice sunny weekend morning, makes me really feel at home in my in my heart. Um, does this guy do anything? Ah, sleepy Pokemon appeared near Celadon City. That is actually another Snorlax that we're going to encounter here. I believe you can find Meowth up in there, if I'm not mistaken. So here we are, Celadon City. And unfortunately, if you remember Team Rocket from Mount Moon, there are a couple Team Rocket people around here. So we better be careful, gang. There we go. Heal our manky a little bit. Okay, so here is one thing that we're gonna do because we are about to get a new member of the squad. Let's see. It is time for Caterpie to be boxed. Thank you, Caterpoo. We appreciate you. Because Caterpoo has Flash, but that's not really something that we're gonna need to use um, soon, anytime soon. But I am going to pick up a couple of these TMs. And I don't know if you remember what these TMs are, but I looked them up off stream uh, because it's really hard to remember all the numbers sometimes. In later games, it doesn't just say TM and then the number, it tells you what the actual TM is. So, in Celadon City, when you go up here, this is kind of a secret. And it's not like too terribly hard to discover, but there's kind of a secret door back here in this building. And you just go up these stairs, a couple flights, and then you're out to the roof, which is delightful. Did this say something? Yes. I know everything! How about that? So, this guy says he knows everything. 
you know, kind of breaking the fourth wall here. He knows everything about the Pokemon world of Pokemon and your Game Boy. And I'm like, wait, but am I not a real boy? Am I not a real kid? Yeah. And you can find all that stuff out in the little book. But here, there is a Pokemon that you can get for free. And it is... Eevee. It is the... It's the Pokemon that your rival has. Uh, the starter that your rival got. They give you a chance to get one for free. And I am going to name Eevee... I'm just going to name her Eve. I think that's very cute. And Wally fans will appreciate the name Eve. Oh, wow, that was weird. Okay. Um, so we have Eve, level 25. Nice. And what I'm going to do, something else that you can do here in Celadon City, is that you can buy things, you can buy the evolution stones, and I believe that I have explained those a little bit, like we talked about Moonstone, Firestone, Thunderstone, Waterstone, so you can buy the Thunderstone, Firestone, and Waterstone in the department store here at the edge of town, right here. See how the marts are usually really small, but the one here is enormous because there are many floors. Yeah, there are just a lot of secrets here. I actually don't remember where you buy them, though. I don't think this is it. Yeah, you can buy some TMs here. I don't remember where any of those, what any of those are. <laughs> um, let's see. You can buy some items, but I'm going to wait because I want to save my money for now. Sorry, I'm going to speed up a little bit. Get to the... Yeah, I don't think that's it. This seems more right. Let's see. Yes. So here, Eevee, in Generation 1, evolves via the Firestone, Thunderstone, or Waterstone. It can evolve into three different Pokemon in Generation 1. And we are going to take the Thunderstone. Which I'm really excited about. We also need to get ourselves a Leaf Stone. And that will be for my dearly beloved wife. I actually, I don't know when we're going to evolve my wife. I'm going to need to look into some stuff there. But, so let's do this. So here, I don't think we've done a stone evolution yet. We can evolve Eevee into... This is a really good Pokemon, guys. Um, and since Jolteon is an electric type, it doesn't know any electric moves, I'm gonna use a couple TMs um, to teach our good friend Eve a few moves, a few electric type moves. Um, we'll get rid of Growl. Cause that just lowers attack one stage. And then, Thunderbolt. Now, Thun oh wow, Mankey can learn Thunderbolt, that's amazing. Um, oh, so can Gyarados, that's also amazing. Um, Thunderbolt is, I think I explained this when we got the TM, they give it to you really early because it's probably one of the best moves in the game. And because it has 95 base power and 100% accuracy, it's, really good. <laughs> um, and Jolteon's a bit higher than the rest of our team right now, so I don't really want to abuse it um, because it could probably destroy a lot of things very easily. So one other thing we're going to do while we're here in the department store is we are going to go to the roof and there is this girl here. Oopsie. Come on. She wants something to drink. And she can give you three TMs when you give her the three different drinks that this uh, vending machine has to offer. Now I'm gonna buy an extra fresh water because I think you might know why if you've been paying attention. So I'll get her a soda pop and a lemonade as well. 
And she gives us another one of the best TMs in the game that we'll probably use later on something. TM 13, Ice Beam. That is another move that's kind of like on par with Thunderbolt. Ice Beam is an amazing move, one of the best moves in the game as well. It sure can freeze the target sometimes. And in this game, freezing your opponent is a freaking death sentence for them. Because um, in other games in the franchise, they can unfreeze kind of on their own. But in this game, they will not unfreeze unless you hit them with a fire type move, which is super overpowered <laughs> and super abusable. Um, rock slide, the best rock type move in the game. And then here, she gives you try attack. Which is just a strong, normal type move. I think it's 80 base power in this game. I might be wrong about that, but... Um, that that and Ice Beam, all of those moves are probably moves that we'll use later on something. I don't really know. Because um, we can probably get through most of the game without uh, while like holding on to our really strong TMs. And we can... And we can just decide what we maybe want to use those TMs on later. So I don't know if we have any regular repels. Yes, I'm going to sell those. Oops, nope. And we're going to buy some super repels. Because these are super useful to have on hand. For when you're in a cave or something. And I always like to buy a lot. Um, some super potions. Yeah, we're just in a big, big buy mood right now. I'll buy a couple great balls too. And maybe three more of these. There we go. All right. So, oops. Please move. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Big shopping trip at the department store. Love to see it. Uh, Oh wow, we have a lot of super potions now. I maybe abused that a little bit. So, now we have that extra fresh water. Yeah, a real kind of cleanup stream today. Open up a, bit, a little bit of the world. We can go back here. And now when we try to get into the our hub city here, he's parched. <gasps> can I have some of this drink? Ah. Uh, there sometimes a simple little like fetch quest where you just need to find the right item to give to the right person to unlock the next part of the game is just so lovely when you do it. It's not hard, it's not difficult, but it just feels good. <laughs> um, he's glugging, he's glugging, and he's saying he's gonna share this with the rest of the guards. Um, so now we have free access to. Saffron City. This is kind of like the big hub city. It's right in the middle of the map. Um, right here, this rocket is guarding the Sylph Company, which is like the big like tech company of the region. It's kind of like, I don't know, like the equivalent of like Apple or Amazon or something. And here, there's actually another really good TM we can snag right over here. This guy just gives it to you. Psychic. The best psychic type move. And I don't know if anything on our squad can learn psychic. And I don't know if we're even going to end up teaching it, but I just wanted to grab it and show you where it was. Yeah, no one can really learn it right now. Maybe later, but we'll see. And I'll just show you. Because if you come down here, this leads to that route that leads to Viridian City that we passed through earlier in the game, where we had to go through the underground path to get there. Come on, I need to drink water real quick. Okay, so now it really just comes down to what we want to do next. I am going to check on something really quick on my handy dandy other computer over here. Let's see. Uh, 
Okay, so I talked about getting the leaf stone so we could evolve my wife. And the way that the stone evolutions work in this game, at least for a lot of the Pokemon, is that once you evolve your Pokemon, you get the advantage of them having better stats and them being stronger, but they don't learn any more moves. So what we're going to do is we are going to keep uh, my dearly beloved wife as a Weeping Bell until level 38, because that is when we are going to learn our best move, and then we can evolve my wife into her final form. And that'll be a little while, but it'll be here before we know it. Let's see. So now, what I would like to do next is go to Celadon City here. Let's get on our bike. Travel a little faster without using the speed up. Now, we talked about how in Lavender Town we are going to need the Silscope to see the Pokemon that are in there. And we can deposit a lot of these items, like we'll deposit Psychic, we'll deposit those really strong TMs that we might use later. Let's see. We'll even deposit our Leaf Stone. Oops, not you. Because we're not going to need to use you until way later. And again, that is just one reality about playing through this game, is that you really have to do a lot of item management. That can be pretty annoying, but it's okay. So we need to get the Silph Scope. And in order to do that, we need to go to the Game Corner. <laughs> and this isn't, I don't think this is something that they do in these games anymore because they don't want to like promote gambling. And like Celadon City and Saffron City are really supposed to signify the like big parts of Tokyo basically that's what this region is really based on a lot of a lot of things are based on regions of Japan uh, each Pokemon region the first four anyway are based on different regions of Japan and the Kanto region which we're in now is based on the real life or Kanto region um, in Japan. And Celadon and Saffron really represent Tokyo, kind of, for the most part. And areas around Tokyo is really what this region is based off of. In Generation 2, which we've talked about a lot, that is based more on the area to the west of Tokyo and areas like Osaka and uh, Kyoto. Now, here, we have a very suspicious-looking character in the game corner. I'm guarding this poster! I guard posters. Totally normal thing to do. Ah, yes, good start. Because we have our fighting time, Hanky Panky. Ready to go! Oh, my good God. Oh, and I miss! Are you kidding me? Do not kill me. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know if this will knock it out, though. That's... Okay, good. We got a critical hit of our own. Love to see it. Excellent look. Okay, Zubat. Ah, here is... I'll, I'll show off Jolteon a little bit. Jolteon will absolutely annihilate this Zubat with Thunderbolt. Ooh, look at that. Back Sprite. So powerful. So spiky. Um, but yeah, I was talking about how Generation 2 is based on um, the area of... Oh, you can name the Pokemon yourself. Hi, thanks for joining. Yeah, when you, anytime you catch a Pokemon, it asks if you can... Uh, if you ask, it asks if you want to nickname it. Which is cool. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Oh, our hideout must might be discovered. Oh, I wonder if you're going into your hideout right now. So then here, there is a little switch behind the poster. 
And then this little staircase appears. Ha ha ha. Uh, I'm going to heal the squad real quick before we go in, just because Mankey's not looking too hot. Um, but yeah, sorry, I keep getting sidetracked. The Generation 2 games are based on the area around Johto and, or around Kyoto and Osaka and like Nara, kind of like the older kind of historic parts of Japan. And you can really feel that in the design of the cities and towns. And this is supposed to be more based on like the built up city parts of Japan. And Generations 3 and 4 are also based on regions of Japan that I won't get into. But it's super cool. And then later games, they base on Hawaii. There's a game based on New York City. The map's based on New York City. One based on France. It, it goes really... Um, there's a lot that goes into it. So here we have the Rocket Hideout in Celadon City. And this is where we're going to be able to find the Silscope. Oh, how many times have I played this game? Oh. Um... If I had to put a number on it, I really don't know. More than 10, for sure. Because especially now... Super sinister. In my adult life, I probably play it a lot more because I've just been able to play it on my computer just whenever I want to, and it's super easy. And I've, I've loved just doing little challenge runs, little runs whenever I feel like it, where I can just use one Pokemon, or maybe I just use a, a themed team. It's just a really relaxing thing for me at the end of the day. So I would say in my adult life here, I've probably played more than I did when I was a kid, honestly. Um, it's a pretty warm, nostalgic place for me. Oh, thanks. Um, are you a big Pokemon fan, or are you just joining for fun? For the hangs. Um, yeah, I really love pretty much every game that they've released. I was kind of talking last stream with uh, a friend in chat how uh, how uh, there were some games I didn't love that much, but honestly, I really love most of them. Even if they're the not as good ones, I still really love them. Don't kill me, thank you. Oh, your husband loves it, mostly just for fun. Well, welcome. Hopefully this can be <laughs> semi-educational, I suppose. Because, yeah, I really, I really say it just about every stream. I just want to show off games that I love. This isn't going to be the most, like, involved, in-depth, like, super-duper speedrun version of this game or anything, super-duper challenging version of this game but I just want to show off the things that I love about it. Fight a couple of these rockets here. So once we get down into the basement of the rocket hideout, okay, I'm just looking at our time. Once we get to the basement of the rocket hideout, you're going to see something that is kind of common in these evil team bases as you go through with the series, in like warp panels. That is something that every evil team has for some reason. Okay, let me go back to quick attack then. If you're gonna disable my gust! Very rude. There we go, Bertie. Um, I my water. Okay, good job. Let's, ah, it does kind of suck that I lose my psychic move by taking away Butterfree. That's okay. <laughs> I always loved that animation for Bubble Beam. It always looked so, like, it looks so, like, powerful and cool. And it's really one of the 
in this game specifically, when you are fighting Misty and you encounter Bubble Beam for the first time, you're like, oh, that's like the first move that you see that looks like genuinely powerful and scary. Um, so I believe the first thing that we need to do is, uh, I'm gonna fight this guy. Ah, uh, yes, he was saying how their boss um, developed the Sylph Scope. Oh, he has so many Pokemon. Uh, okay. Yeah, what I might do is just absolutely annihilate his team with Jolteon. But uh, he was saying how his boss developed the Sylph Scope to see ghosts, and we are going to encounter the boss of Team Rocket in this hideout, which is very exciting. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's go into Eve. A classic Jesse and James Pokemon, coughing. We've seen a Grimer. Oh yeah, we see a Grimer in Mount Moon. It is literally just a pile of toxic sludge. That's all that Pokemon is. Which is actually a little uh, critique on water pollution, which I love. In Generation 5, there's a Pokemon called Trubbish that's literally just a pile of garbage. And I remember when it came out, people were really just like, what is this? This is so stupid. It's just a pile of trash. I'm like, yeah, but it's like a commentary on littering, on pollution. Um, which is actually a pretty cool, interesting thing. And a good inspiration for a Pokemon. Because what is art if not, um, a reflection of real life? Even if it takes place in a fantastical children's game. So, I don't know if we need to fight that guy. I'm gonna hold off for now. We might have to fight him later. So here are those warp panels. <laughs> Aren't some Pokemon just like a stick? How is garbage more dumb? You're right. So many Pokemon are just like an inanimate object. Like we saw a uh, Voltorb earlier. Yes, like so these warp panels when like that arrow is pointing down so it'll warp you down and this little square is where you'll stop. Oh, a rare candy, excellent. Um, so we need to take these little warp panels to where we need to go. And the first thing we need to do is in this hideout, there is an elevator. But to operate the elevator, you need something called the lift key. Oh yes, and you can kind of chain the things like that. Uh, we need something called the lift key. And to do that, I'm pretty sure we need to go here before we do the second puzzle. I'll go ahead and fight you. I don't have to, but I will. Um, so once we get the lift key, we can, okay, great. Just a nice little ratata, something I can, something I can kill. So once we get the lift key, we'll be able to take the elevator to our fateful encounter with the leader of Team Rocket, which I'll save that as a surprise. Um, it's actually really cool. I, I like Team Rocket a lot. Um, Something that they do a lot as the series goes on is like the conceit of the evil team. And there's always like an evil team in every game. And their ambitions grow more and more insane as the series goes on. Where like, you know, at one point in the later games, they're trying to like recreate the world in their own image, like things like that. But in this game, they're just like the mob, basically. Like the mob or like the Yakuza, I suppose, um, of Japan. Do not... Frustrated. Um, let's go... What am I doing? We'll go into E. Yeah, pound, that's a weak move. But... Yeah, I find Team Rocket very charming, and I think their small ambitions actually make for a 
nice intimate story. Nothing too terribly world-breaking. One thing about Kanto is it's very intimate. Okay, great. We have one more awakening that I'll just use on our good friend Keith Angel. But we are out of those. So yes, I came to the right place. We got to come here first. Because here is... Ooh, an HP up. That's fun. I'll use that. Um, I'll use that on... We'll use that on Jolteon. Because Jolteon is in their final form. And her HP is not really going to be able to go up much more drastically. So now we get here. And there is this guy up in the corner. And he is holding... What is TMO2? Oh, Razor Wind. Razor Wind is a terrible move. It is a move that does... Yo! Lock test. Thanks for joining us. Um, it is a terrible move that takes two turns to charge up, even though it's not very strong. I'm going to save before this guy. So, this guy. The elevator doesn't work. <gasps> Who has the lift key? Just another one of those delightful little item fetch quests to help you uh, proceed in the game. And, uh... Oh yeah, Birdie's kind of weak here. And I think coughing is at the point where it might be able to explode. I'm gonna go into Keith Angel because he is going to be able to handle that way better than Birdie. Um, but yes, I was kind of saying a little bit ago, this region is specifically designed to feel cozy, which I love. Again, vibes, baby. Vibes. That's all I want in a video game. I want my vibes. Uh, we'll just stay in. Because Keith Angel... I love the name Keith Angel, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for recommending that name. It's so delightful and weird. Um, great name. Absolutely right. Let's see. Ooh, what does Cozy look like for me? Oh, interesting. Oh yeah, and this guy goes, Oh no, I dropped the whiff key! And then you just grab it. You just steal it. What does Cozy look like for me? Well, one of my favorite things in the whole wide world is at the end of the day, uh, my wife and I will just chill in our spots in our living room, and we will watch our shows and just chill with some of the main lights off, and we'll just turn on a little lamp to really just set the mood and really decompress for the day. Um, it's really one of my favorite places in the whole wide world, honestly. And I just love setting the cozy mood. And another thing about this game, you know, it's easy to call something cozy and familiar when it's so... <laughs> Thank you, JJ Bean. Um, it's easy to call something from it, like cozy when it is so nostalgic for you, like this game is for me. But it really does kind of have that feeling with this color palette and the 8-bit music has a really nice, simple feel, I should say. I guess simple is synonymous for cozy. And this isn't, ah, Nugget, we're gonna sell that. We gonna sell that. We gonna be rich. Gonna be rich, kids. Yeah, there's a lot of nice items littered in these hideouts. Uh, another Moonstone. Something we probably won't use, but that's fine. Okay, TMO7. What is TMO7? I'm just curious. Horn Drill. Okay, that is a move. I don't think anyone can learn it now. That is a move that actually is a one-hit KO move in this game. I think you have to be a higher level than your opponent to, for it to work at all, but there is a 30% chance it will just automatically uh, one-shot your opponent, which is really cool. So here, sorry, I have to kind of track where my uh, warp panels are going to take me. Oh, I didn't look. Okay, good. That's the right one. And then I go here, and that takes me down to that one. And then 
this will take me down to this one. Hold on, is there maybe an item up there? I don't know if there is. Yes, there is! I knew I went over here for a reason. Ah, oh, great. It's another super potion. Hold on. Bear with me, gang. I kind of got to go around the bend here. Back to where I was going. Um, yes. There we go. Okay. So now, we are... I don't remember where this leads. Oh yeah, this just leads to a room. I think there's some items in there. Um, we'll go ahead and fight this fellow. Intruder alert! Um, but yeah, simple is kind of synonymous for cozy. At least for me, in this context. So we're coming up on 45 minutes for this stream. I kind of wanted to keep it a quick one, but we are almost to the end of this little dungeon here. So I want to stay in and we can see if we can defeat the rocket boss. And if we can, that'll probably take us to the end of our stream for today. Okay, let's go into one of our stronger Pokemon here so we can sweep a little bit. Just clean up. Because sometimes when you are playing through this game, it can be a little bit of a slog going through these trainers. And sometimes you just want to kind of get to those little boss battles. Yeah, Thunderbolt is ridiculously strong. Um, so again, I'm trying not to abuse it, but it might be hard. <laughs> um, yes. Ooh, a Hyper Potion. I think I was saying a Hyper Potion can heal up to 200 hit points. A Super Potion only heals up to 50. So that's a big step up. So my bag's not really going to be able to hold too many more items right now. And I'll do a lot of that item maintenance. I might do that off stream once we're finished here, just so we can kind of get going. So we need to go to basement floor four. And now that we have the lift key, we can do that. Okay, so I'm gonna save here for a minute because we are about to encounter one little mini boss before the big boss. Let's see, let's save. Alrighty. Our friends Jesse and James. Payback time. Yeah, the last time we saw them was a Mount Moon. Yeah, I love how in this game, because they don't exist in the original Red and Blue. In the original Red and Blue, it's just a couple more like rocket grunts, so to speak. And, uh,. I really like how in this game they are like a little mini boss. Um, that's a cool little bit of game design, I think. Uh, okay, so we're poisoned, so I'm gonna go out to. We'll go out to Keith Angel for now. Oh, I really hope you don't poison me. Okay, good. Because I don't want everybody to be poisoned. I don't think I have any antidotes anymore. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, good. Okay, great. It's okay that Birdie is poisoned for now. I don't really plan on using Birdie for the next fight. He's not going to be super useful. Classic Meowth. I love that sprite of Meowth. Just looking so fun and... Like, hey girl. Um, fun and mischievous. Yeah, we're not messing around, gang. We're not messing around. Prepare to get destroyed. Yeah, I think the next fight with Jesse and James, spoiler alert, um, their Ekans and Coughing are going to be evolved, which will be fun. Oh yes, James has a little rose in his hand. That was like one of his trademarks. Looks like Team Rock is blasting off again. That is like the thing that they would always say in the anime classic. Um, do I need to potion anybody? I'll heal Keith Angel. 
Um, I don't think... I'm gonna start with my wife. Alright folks, so this will be one of the last things we do on our stream here. I know I'm pretty positive there's an item over here. Yes, there is. Oh, and this is one thing we haven't really talked about much. You see how my game is doing that? I The first time that happened, when I was a kid, I thought my game was broken. <laughs> um, but that is just something that you see when... Yeah, and iron raises defense. I'm really uh, beefing up Jolteon. Every time you take a couple steps, your Pokemon will lose one HP. You see how Birdie is down a little bit? Like, right there it says 39. If I do that, it'll say 38. So the poison gradually kind of saps your Pokemon the more steps you take. Um, which is a really cool mechanic, honestly. And now we have the boss. So this is the boss of Team Rocket. His name, Giovanni. Giovanni. Which kind of just plays into the whole mob vibe. Because, you know, the stereotype is like the Italian mob in America. And... Ooh, a guard spec. That just means that we can't critical hit him, I'm pretty sure. There we go. Doesn't matter. Got that double super effective. My wife is strong, baby. My baby's strong. Um, Rhyhorn, I'm actually... We'll go to Keith Angel. Because wife just leveled up, so we'll try to even the playing field with old Keith Angel. Um, now, this battle... We have really good type matchups, because Rhyhorn is another rock and ground type, and this will just knock it out in one shot. Um, we have really good type matchups for this fight. Nice. Oh, Dragon Rage. Very cool, iconic move for Gyarados. Um, this will get rid of Splash. That says nothing. This move does 40 hit points every time you use it. I'm pretty sure it's 40. Um... So it would do almost half of Keith Angel's HP. Um, it can be very useful when you don't have a good move against something. Ah, yes. And Team uh, Jesse and James always have their Meowth, but Giovanni has his Persian, which is the evolved form of Meowth. And in this game, it's actually a very strong Pokemon, so we don't want to mess around here. Um, another guard spec. And sometimes that can really just, when they use items like that, that can really give you uh, an opening to win pretty easily. Even though Growl will make it, yeah, so we aren't able to kill it. So let's just, one more Karate Chop should do it. Um, also knows Payday, just like Meowth. Does a lot more damage, though. And that'll about do it for Giovanni. Um, yes, you will encounter Giovanni more. He will be more, he'll be tougher. Uh, as we get later in the game. Utmost care. A child like you would never understand what I hope to achieve. I shall step aside this time. I hope we meet again. And then he leaves behind the Silphscope. Um, so, gang, I think that's probably going to wrap it up. Um, I'm going to pop up here to the basement floor one. Oh yes, we have to fight this guy. Um, we'll fight this guy, and then we'll call it. Because this is just how you get out. Once you fight this guy, that little barrier uh, will disappear, and then you can just walk right out of the game corner there. Um, but this is a horrible matchup for my wife, so I'm gonna go out to Keith Angel. Okay, good. I did not... Oh, I'll show Dragon Rage. Oh, sick. Um, so yeah, once you defeat this rocket, that little barrier will disappear, and then you can walk right out. And then I'll do some kind of like item management stuff off stream, so that way we can really hit the ground running on our next one. And we can go back to the Pokemon Tower to pick up our next team member and continue the story. One more bubble beam ought to do it. 
Also, coincidentally, I really need to pee. So it'll be a great time to stop. So yes, the barrier is gone. And I'm going to save right here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, again, my name's Trent. This is Silver Cave Gaming. My band, Silver Cave. I always leave the ad up there uh, if you want to check that out. I uh, put all of these streams on YouTube. So if you're not watching live, you can just watch uh, at your leisure later. And I know that we're about halfway through the game right now. Thank you. So if you want to catch up on where we are for next stream, you can watch the videos there. And with that, I will bid you adieu. Have a lovely Sunday, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.